Welcome back to Smoky Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. Today, what I'm doing for you is a prime rib roast. This prime rib roast was supplied by Low Bells of New York. Beautiful, beautiful cut of meat. I can't wait to sink my teeth into this. Well, I'm going to show you how to do this on an outdoor cooker. What I'll be using today is my Kamado Joe Classic. I'm going to be cooking this at 200 degrees, searching for an internal temperature of about 125 when I pull it. I'm shooting for a medium rare. And then we're going to put a sear on it. Also got a few sauces I want to show you and a few sides we're going to elaborate on just a little. So let's go ahead and get busy. Just take a look at this beautiful meat. This is USDA Prime. Look at the marbling on that. This is just absolutely beautiful. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to rub this with olive oil. You want to get it on all surfaces. Lobels has already removed the bones. They made an incision here. The bones are actually already separated and they took and trussed it back up. So that's going to make it easier when it's time to carve this. So now what we want to do is take salt. You want to be pretty liberal with this salt. It's a big piece of meat. I believe this one weighed in at seven pounds. Black pepper. We'll be doing every inch of this, all sides. A little cayenne pepper. Garlic powder. A Little bit of thyme. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. We're gonna go ahead and get this side and the ends done as well. All right, I started my Kamado Joe a little earlier. I've got it leveled out perfectly. At 200 degrees, I've got a probe that's connected to my Tappy Q thermometer, and I'm reading 200 exactly, very low temperature, and that's what we're going to do this at. We're going to let it go. And it's going to take probably somewhere between four to six hours, but we're going to bring it up very slowly. I'm going to have probes inserted into the prime rib dead center. I'm going in with two probes. I want to catch it at two different points. One there, we're going to go in at this angle right here. We're going to monitor it just like this. We're going to bring it up to around 125. I'm shooting for a medium rare. We'll take a look at it when we hit that. It is late September. Fall is right around the corner, winter right behind that. What I always think about this time of the year is the upcoming holidays. We got Thanksgiving right around the corner, then Christmas. What I'm showing you with this prime rib is a great alternative to the traditional Christmas turkey or ham. While we got the prime rib coming up to temp, we're gonna go ahead and make a horseradish sauce because it needs a couple hours for all these flavors to come together. It doesn't get much more simple than this. All I'm using is sour cream. I'm gonna probably throw in, I tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the entire thing in here. That's eight ounces, one cup. All right, now I'm gonna take some fresh chive. We're gonna dice this up. We're gonna call that a tablespoon. Now we're gonna add in fresh ground horseradish. Try to find this fresh ground horseradish. It's in the refrigerated department of your grocery store. All right. I'm just gonna guesstimate this. We're gonna go in about three tablespoons. Give all this a good mix. All right, you do wanna taste this just to see if it's where you want it as far as the amount of horseradish. Mm. That's good, no more horseradish, it's perfect. I am gonna sprinkle just a little bit of cayenne on there. Gonna mix this in. We're gonna put a cover on it. 
put it in the fridge for at least two hours, and we have a lot longer than that to wait. That lets all these flavors really mingle and marry and come together. Let's take a look and see what we got. I just hit 125 internal temp. There we go. We're going to go ahead and pull the probes out of this meat. I'm going to take this inside. I'm going to tin it with some foil and let it rest for around 20 to 30 minutes. And I'm going to be making an au jus sauce in between that. All right, so this is the renderings from the prime rib. What I'm going to do is add in just a touch of flour here and we're gonna make a real quick au jus. All right, that flour is going to add a little thickening power to this. I might go in with just a touch more. All right, we're just gonna cook in this flour for just a few minutes, knock that flour taste out of it. All right, now we're gonna add in some beef broth. I'm just gonna play this by ear. We're going by thickness. All right, let's hold with that right there for a second. And as you can see, the little bits and pieces from the prime rib are right here. That's called fawn. That's what we scraped off the bottom. We used actual fat, the drippings from it makes an incredible sauce. Now one thing I like to add also is just a splash or two of Worcestershire sauce. Now you could actually use this at the thickness it is right now, which is very thin, or you could reduce it down just a tad more and thicken it up somewhat. But the one thing I wanna do right now is give it a taste and see if it's salty enough. Mmm, that's really good. I am going to add just a little bit of salt. This is something you really don't want to add a lot of seasonings to, just basic salt and pepper, and let the flavors of the actual beef come shining through. That's enough salt. Let's go in with a little black pepper. Give it another good mix. I'm going to go ahead and turn the fire off. We're at the thickness that I like right there. Just a little pan gravy. All right, so I'm transferring all this into this ramekin. It's nice and thick. It's going to help keep this warm until we're ready. So the prime rib has been resting for roughly 30 minutes. I cranked up the Kamado Joe up to 500. I'm looking on the tap queue right now. I'm actually up to about like 513 degrees. Look over here, and here is the prime rib right here. I've had it tinted. Let's do a real quick check internally and see how much carryover heat raised this up. Let's go about dead center. I'm at 135, I pulled it at 125. So you can see by foiling this and letting it rest, not only did all the juices stay inside of this, it raised in temperature. Now I'm at 135. Medium rare is around 141. So what we're getting ready to do now is do a very fast, quick sear on this, roughly eight to nine minutes. And it is screaming hot. That is gonna put the final caramelization on this fat. It's gonna put a nice crust on this. Here we go. Look at the beautiful color. That's what eight minutes of searing did. I'm telling you what, it smells like steak heaven out here. Is that beautiful? Look at that, it's just gorgeous. I'm gonna cut the twine on this. We're gonna separate the bones from the rest of this prime rib. And we're going to carve. Now like any other meat, what you can expect is your meat to be more well done on the ends and as you get into the center, that's where you're gonna get your desired cut, which I went into the center with two probes. I hit 136, which is gonna be more on the rare side. Medium rare would be about 141, and I'm okay with medium rare as well, but on prime rib, with me anyway, and most of my family, we love it more on the rare side. 
And the beauty about removing these bones is the fact that you can cut this as thin as you like. Look at the beautiful color on that. And this is actually on the end. This is more of a medium, as you can see. And by the way, these bones, the reason they're tied and trussed back onto this meat that I got from Lobel's is because it induces a lot of flavor that you would not normally have if the bones were simply removed and discarded. Bones carry a lot of flavor. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going dead center to see how we look there. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and carve some more of this up. going to make a plate. We're going to do a taste test here momentarily. This is the au jus I made, by the way, and this is a horseradish sauce. You can do either or, you know, however you want it. I love them both. I'm going with the au jus first. That, that is just cutting like butter. Look at that. All right, here we go. Can't wait. I don't know how anything can, can be better than that. That is just totally melting your mouth. I mean, it just dissolves like cotton candy. It is so tender. Excellent flavors. People, I promise you, you really should consider this for your, your Thanksgiving or your Christmas. And Lobel's of New York, I want to thank you so much for sending this out. I've never experienced any meat of this quality. Excellent, excellent stuff. What I've shown you today is really a foolproof, bulletproof method of doing prime rib. If you start off like I did, low and slower, hang around 200 degrees, and actually this one hung more around 205. A time or two it went to 209, trying to balance it out, but for the most part, it was safe. No way you're gonna overcook this. Let it go until you reach your target temperature. If you don't like this rare, then bring it up to like 135, rest it 30 minutes. That's gonna put it more in that medium range. If you want it well done, then whatever you want. You know, it's totally up to you. It's your prime rib, but I've shown you a foolproof method by doing that, take the low, slow way, and then rest it, and at the very end, go hot. 500 degrees, fast sear, eight, nine minutes, you're done. Fantastic. Until next time, smoke your ribs.